Hello, biology class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson nine. It's titled Blood Pressure. It's at the bottom. It's in the middle. You can see it. This is the second last lecture of the unit. Um, blood pressure is essentially how hard your blood is pushing against your arteries. Uh, the harder it pushes, uh, kind of the worse it is because it's more likely that they're going to break. I'll also draw your attention to the key points. You'll notice how small they are in this lesson because of that key point three. Um, it's the sphygmometer. And if you can spell that uh, somewhere on the test, I'll give you a bonus mark. Um, sphygmometer. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so lesson nine, blood pressure. Let's do it. Blood has to get everywhere in the body. So in order to push it to those places through your vessels, which we're gonna talk about next lesson, uh, there needs to be considerable pressure. Um, there needs to be like a hose that shoots water out of it is going to have some pressure behind it. The more pressure it has, the farther it's going to shoot. The farther the uh, blood needs to travel, the higher the pressure needs to be within those vessels. So the highest pressure is within the aorta because it is the um, artery that comes right after the heart. The left ventricle pumps and it goes into the aorta and it has the highest pressure. Once it goes through there, pressure drops as the vessels branch out and get farther and farther away from the heart to where when it's heading back to the heart, there's really almost no pressure at all and that can be a problem. So, we talked about systole and diastole a little bit before, but I think I talked about that in terms of diastole first, because that was when the ventricles are relaxed. So the blood is still under pressure when the heart relaxes, but not as much pressure. The ventricles are not pushing the uh, blood at that time. So when we take our blood pressure, and you probably have before, that's the lower number. Systole is the time when the heart is contracting, the ventricles are contracting. So that means that there's a higher blood pressure. It is going to be the higher number. Uh, and it is always highest near the aorta. We often measure it on our arm. Uh, and normal blood pressure uh, is coming up in this lesson later. It's right here. So normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. So that's 120 systole over 80 diastole. Um, it depends on a whole bunch of factors. Uh, I guess five is what I've got here. It depends on the amount of blood within your vessels. It depends on how fast your heart is beating and how much time it has to relax. It depends on the size of the arteries and it depends on the elasticity of those arteries. Are they stretchy or are they stiff? And also depends on the consistency or the viscosity of blood. Is it thick like syrup? Hopefully not. Or is it more like water? Um, but normal blood pressure is 120 systole over 80 diastole. I don't currently remember what the units are for those, but 120 over 80 is a normal blood pressure. So that's systolic over diastolic pressure. And to find out what those are, we use a sphygmometer and a stethoscope. So a sphygmometer is the cuff that they put around your arm and then the stethoscope goes in so they can listen for uh, the heartbeat. So if these numbers are higher than normal, uh, your heart may be working too hard. So your arteries may not be healthy uh, and there may be some other problems maybe with your heart or with your arteries. Uh, you may be soon to have a heart attack, but blood pressure is a very large indicator of some problems. So we use a sphygmometer, which is the cuff and a stethoscope, which is what you listen to. Um, to figure out what the systolic pressure is and the diastolic pressure is. So you can see this is an automatic machine. Um, this person put their uh, arm in and they found that their systolic pressure was 105, diastolic was 64. That is very, very normal. Uh, I guess the units are milligrams of mercury, mmHg. And then we have a heart rate that it gave us at 88. So uh, you are considered to have high blood pressure if your systolic pressure is more than 140 or your diastolic pressure is greater than 90. So this person is okay in both senses. They are well underneath, no problem at all. So again, systolic is when the ventricles are contracting and diastolic pressure is when the ventricles are relaxing. There can be some dangers of high blood pressure. We call it hypertension. Um, 
that is high blood pressure. Uh, low pressure is hypotension. Uh, if you have sustained diastolic pressures greater than 100, it can be damaging to the brain as the vessels up there can get leaky. Uh, kidneys can be damaged with pressure, so can the heart and many other tissues, as well as the main concern, which is aneurysms, which is a bulging or a bursting of an artery. And you can bleed out very fast depending on the artery that breaks. If it's in the brain as well, it can cause a lot of damage and there's sometimes very little chance of recovery. Um, what I'd like you to do is in the booklet, there is a virtual lab. I'd like you to go to that um, website, check it out, um, investigate it, uh, and change many of the settings to find out what causes high blood pressure. There is a ta there's several tables for you to complete. There's several questions for you to complete. There are instructions within the simulation. So I want you to find those instructions within there. It's just a, a tab that you need to open and do what it says. Um, if you guys have any questions about what's expected, please let me know. But you should be able to access it on a computer and possibly on your phone as well. Uh, I heard last year that it worked for some people. But if you have any questions about blood pressure or anything else so far in this unit, let me know. Stay tuned for the last lecture of the circulatory system, which is all about arteries and veins. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you soon.